Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a very important interview question that my trainees ask me and my subscribers also ask me, which is how does a Kubernetes cluster in production look like? Okay. So interviewer here just wants to understand whether you have actually managed a cluster in production or not. Okay. In, in Kubernetes. So I'm going to talk about a cluster that I've managed myself in one of my companies where I worked. Okay. Okay. So here I'm talking about AWS EKS clusters because that is where my experience and expertise is. So, yeah. So you can start by, uh, by saying that we have a repository here. I've given an example of a uh, GitLab repo, but it can be any repository. Okay. Whatever platform you're using. So here I'm talking about a uh, GitLab repo where we keep our uh, Terraform modules. These modules are used to create the EKS cluster and its other components that I'll be talking about. Okay. So this is how you can start your uh, answer in an interview. Okay. So here I have some notes uh, that I want to go through. Okay. So to, to explain this uh, cluster question uh, in total. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'll be uh, saying that I am using AWS EKS clusters. Okay. In production. And uh, yeah. So after I explain this part, then I will explain these things that we have, uh, I mean, the first module is going to create the main EKS cluster plus its worker nodes in terms of worker nodes. We're using EC2 auto scaling groups. So we have an uh, auto scaling group, which is going to provision EC2 instances. Those instances are going to be our worker nodes in the EKS cluster. Then also we have another module called module two. This module is going to provision another EC2 instance. This instance is going to be used as an admin node. Okay. So it's, it's going to be the node from where we can manage our uh, multiple clusters because here we are talking about production. Okay. So in production, you will have uh, multiple clusters to manage. So you want a centralized node from where you can manage all of your clusters. So this module two is going to create the EC2 instance plus uh, it will have kubectl tool which you can use to uh, administer all the clusters. Okay. In your environment. So that's what I've written here as well. Okay. Yeah. So, and apart from this uh, EC2 instance that we'll be uh, creating as part of this uh, Terraform module two, we will also have other components like daemon sets, which we use for uh, configuring the monitoring agent. Okay. So we, we are using uh, a daemon set for that and some other uh, deployments, which are used to uh, configure our cluster. Okay. That I'm going to talk about next. So in terms of the deployments, we have ingress controller. We also have a Vietnamese sealed secrets. Okay. So as you know that the uh, standard secrets in Kubernetes are, are not encrypted. They are only a base 64 encoded, which is not safe. So we use a Bitnami sealed secrets, which you can safely push to your uh, GitLab repo as well without uh, seeing the real secret. Okay. So we use a Bitnami sealed secrets there. And for uh, monitoring uh, components, as I mentioned, as part of our deployment configuration for our EKS cluster, we use a Grafana, which will hold our dashboards and alerts and for data sources to collect the metrics. We're using Prometheus memory solution and for logs, we're using Loki solution. Okay. And we have another one, which is coming up, which is a Tempa. Okay. Which is a, a Tempa for uh, traces basically. Okay. So sometimes uh, AI is, is going to give you the answer as well, but yeah. So yeah. It's called tempo. Sorry. Okay. So which is to, uh, get the information on all, all the traces, which I'm going to talk about in some other video, because this is a solution, which is something new for me. Also, I'm trying to explore that. Okay. But yes, uh, you, you can talk about it that we use a deployment to create the uh, monitoring infrastructure for, for us. Okay. So we use a Prometheus Mimir for metrics. We use Loki for, uh, logs, uh, aggregation and we have a Grafana dashboards and alerts. All these are configured via a deployment as part of our module two here. I'm talking about Terraform modules here. Okay. Let me write that part as well. So these are uh, Terraform modules.
ओके नेक्स्ट देन वी हैव अनदर अनदर मॉड्यूल मॉड्यूल थ्री व्हिच इज टू क्रिएट द नेम स्पेसेस द कुबेरनेटिस सर्विसेस राउट फिफ्टी थ्री रिकॉर्ड्स फॉर आर इंजन एक्स इंग्रेस कंट्रोलर सो दीज आर सम एडिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन सो नॉट आई थिंक मैंडेटरी फॉर ऑल द स्टैंडर्ड क्वेश्चन बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एड यू कैन एड अनदर मॉड्यूल दैट यू यूज टू क्रिएट द नेम स्पेसेस द सर्विसेस द राउट फिफ्टी थ्री रिकॉर्ड्स फॉर योर इंजन एक्स इंग्रेस कंट्रोलर ओके एंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ नेमिंग कन्वेंशन सो दिस अगेन डिपेंड्स ऑन वन कंपनी टू द अदर सो इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन जस्ट mention that this is how we name our clusters we use the environment name the region name in which the cluster is going to reside and then the name of the cluster that we see uh, that we want to choose okay so this is this is like one of the ways by which you can choose a standard naming convention for all your clusters then let's talk about the cluster size so in terms of the size okay so this is actually from a real cluster okay not just any random values because as i mentioned i have uh, I manage this cluster myself, so the node group size can be up to hundred nodes, or it can be more as well. So as you can see, uh, in general, you will have hundred plus worker node instances as part of your EKS cluster. Instance uh, size, uh, sorry, or, or the instance size or the instance type of your worker nodes, it can be something like this: m six i dot two x large instance type, or it can be others as well, depending on how many applications you are. managing and how many powers are running depends on that but this is just one example that it's 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 going to be something like this okay the instance type of your worker nodes then your nodes are going to scale between 5 to 120 nodes okay and uh, we are using horizontal pod auto scalers as well which is going to sorry a horizontal pod auto auto scaler I'll, I'll come later so this is for the nodes uh, node part not for the pods okay so uh, in terms of scaling of the node we are I'll just delete it. But actually, this came automatically from AI. So we have uh, nodes between five to one hundred twenty. Okay, which is going to scale up and scale down depending on uh, what we need at a given point of time. In terms of the pods, uh, this type of cluster can have three thousand plus pods running at a given time. Uh, in terms of namespaces, they can be one hundred and fifty plus namespaces, depending on how many applications are deployed. Because we generally deploy each application in its own uh, specific namespace. Daemon sets here I've just given five plus, but it can be more as well, depending on the requirement. Okay, and then uh, deployments in terms of how many uh, deployments you have. So uh, we have uh, uh, close to five hundred plus deployments and. Uh, And similarly, we have uh, 500 plus uh, services as well, and we also use ingress. So we have 500 plus ingress resources as well. Stateful sets again, we have five plus. So here, stateful sets are used for stateful applications only. So generally, you will have databases deployed at stateful sets. But in general, companies uh, try to use one managed service like in AWS. We have RDS. If you have relational databases to manage. so in that case you 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 won't need to create too many stateful sets but even uh, but if you have some some uh, small amount of data to manage then you can use stateful set pods to manage your database infrastructure within kubernetes cluster then uh, to scale the pods we have some uh, hpas as well horizontal pod auto scaler which is based on cpu based on cpu and uh, memory okay so this is how you can mention so we have a 40 plus horizontal pod auto scalers which is used to scale your pod applications up and uh, i mean scale out and scale in the number of pods uh, for your application depending on a particular uh, use case okay then in terms of config maps we have 50 plus uh, config maps okay and in terms of secrets as i mentioned we don't have any secrets because we don't manage secrets locally in kubernetes which is since it is it, it is not secure and encrypted so we are using some other solution like a bitnami sealed secrets okay and then for the cpu utilization that we are using for our hpa let me mention that as well for hpa so we are using 60% average average scaling okay scaling once again it depends uh, it can be from uh, 10 to 40 uh, replicas of your hpas okay using your hpas using hpas so horizontal pod or scaler you can use to scale your number of pods between 
10 to 40 if uh, cpu uh, if a cpu utilization uh, reaches 60% on an average okay so this is this is what you can uh, tell in the interview also and we have uh, 40 plus hpas uh, configured for different type of applications then we are also using some add-ons like external dns amazon ebs csi driver we have amazon vpc cni a Q proxy. So these are uh, the uh, add-ons that you can see from the EKS UI okay, in AWS. Okay. So this is how you can explain a production Kubernetes cluster. Okay. So I think this inf information is, is good enough because you will, you will only get like, I think two, three minutes to explain all these things. So you just need to summarize everything and explain in a way that interviewer understands. Okay. You have actually managed a production Kubernetes uh, a cluster. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button. I always request and uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel. It really um, motivates me to make more videos like this. Okay. So, so, so I, I hope this video was useful. Okay. If it was just uh, hit the like button, share this video with others and uh, yeah, do, do a subscribe to my channel. All right, guys, that's all for this one. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.